Hey, good morning, you guys, and Merry Christmas. Uh, we're here this morning to talk about the Northford Timber Frame class of 2015, which is coming up in uh, like four months from now. The dates on class are April 24, 25, and 26. Uh, I'd like to let you know a little bit about this year's class project. We're going to be working on a four bent timber frame, beautiful structure, that's going to go up in Lincolnville, Maine. Uh, the barn raising will be in September, and if you're a member of the class of 2015 this year, you will be invited to the barn raising. It'll be about a five day process where we go up and put this four bent structure up. Uh, I would encourage you to take class if you have an interest in timber framing. If you've looked around at some of the other timber frame classes in New England, I think you'll find that at 295 our class is a real bargain. You're going you're gonna to learn an awful lot about timber framing in a very short period of time. You're going to have the opportunity to become a part of our group, which means that our relationship with you doesn't end when class is over. You're always invited back every summer to our workshops, to our timber frame raisings, but of course you only pay one time and that's to come to class. So I'm standing inside of this queen bent, as we would call it. This is also for a timber frame project that's going up to Bar Harbor, Maine. This is going to be erected up in Bar Harbor, Maine in May, about mid-May. And also as a member of the class of 2015, you'll have the opportunity to actually help us raise these queen bents up, which go on the second floor of a beautiful timber frame um, up in Bar Harbor. So I would explain to you what's really unusual and pretty cool about this whole thing is this entire queen bent, as we would call it, is cherry. So the queen posts are cherry and the queen tie beams are cherry. This cherry actually has some pretty good figure in it too. Um, it's in the finishing process now. It has two coats on it. We put five coats on our timber frames. And I think you'll see that these, uh, these freeform cherry braces, which still have the live edge uh, from the tree, the bark was scraped off. And these are actually hand planed with a Lee Nielsen scrub plane. So this is a Lee Nielsen hand scrub plane, which has a convex blade in it. Instead of using a power planer on it, we'll plane it kind of at about a 45 degree angle to the grain, so you don't get tear out. But the convex blade leaves a concave surface on the wood. So this will get hand rubbed with uh, five coats of uh, wipe-on polyurethane, a Minwax product. And when it oxidizes, and this turns to that beautiful brownish red that cherry does, um, it's, it's just a beautiful color. These are big, these are about five foot. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit and give you guys a really quick lesson on how to fit up these uh, wany natural shaped cherry braces. It's a process that has been, for me over 40 years, a continuing learning process. Sometimes these things might have a twist in them. Sometimes you might actually be doing a tree branch or part of a tree branch. However, these are just flat. They were sawed. They were sawed with a wood miser and they came from some cherry logs that were about eight feet long that simply had a little curve to them. Nothing dramatic. As you can see, uh, just about right, just about what you'd want something freeform to look like. So really quick, what I'd like to explain is that the, the normal way that this queen post would interact with this queen tie is that it should be 90 degrees. They should be 90 degrees to each other. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll, I'll make a blueprint of where the, the mortises should be relative to the tenons that are on these free frame, frame pieces. Now, the first important part is to take this, this, this free form cherry brace stock and you lay it over the top of, say, a piece of plywood. I actually have a fixture that I use, which is a half inch piece of Lexon, in other words, plastic and my fixture is four foot by six foot. So you're able to take a curved piece like this and you lay it over the top of something that you know is rectangular and is 90 degrees from each other. Instead of doing a bunch of burdensome math 
and doing the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, instead of going through that whole hypotenuse calculation to get your long measurement. You know, over the years, it's a nice easy way to cheat just to, just to lay this, this curved piece over a, a piece of plywood or, as I suggested, a piece of plastic. Then once you scribe these angles, you're ready to make your tenons. Once you've made your tenons, that's when you need to make a blueprint for yourself because this brace may be two or three inches different than that brace. In other words, it gets mortised vertically and it gets mortised horizontally in its real life. So if I look at my blueprint, this brace here, the mortise is 48 inches from the shoulder. And this brace to my left is 46 and 3 quarters. So right away there's an inch and a quarter difference in where this mortise is from that mortise. But by making this blueprint based on laying this irregular shaped piece over a square piece of plywood or plastic, you're able to determine exactly where your mortises should go. If that makes sense to you guys, here's what I do then. If this mortise was supposed to be 48 inches from this shoulder, I'll actually mortise it over uh, a half inch less. So 47 and a half inches would be the leading edge of this mortise. This one here measured at 46 and 3 eighths. So I'll mortise this one at 46. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that when you rough assemble, you need to pre-assemble anytime you do any scribing stuff. I find that we need to pre-assemble it, especially when your pieces are 12 inches wide like this. So, we know that this queen post should be exactly 90 degrees from this tie beam. However, by doing the subtraction on where this mortise is, it actually splays this queen post to the right. In other words, it becomes wider at the bottom than it should be. So it's 12 foot hook and go at the top. And when you move this mortise a half inch, you actually pick up about an inch and a half down the bottom. So in other words, you start with your queen post being splayed out approximately three quarters of an inch based on the subtraction you did here. The reason for that is because you want to rough assemble this. If you tried to get this to fit perfectly the first time with a big 12 inch piece like this, four inches thick, I'm not so sure you'd be as successful as you'd want to be. So by giving yourself the opportunity to pre-assemble it in a way that it comes out wider than it should, what it allows us to do is it allows us to take this wonderful metal scribe or awl. Then it allows you, and if you can get a picture here of how you can see the lead in for that because it's not pushed in just tight yet, but I'll actually be able to use the scribe and scribe the shape of this irregular piece. Now remember it's too wide at the bottom. So then what I'll do is house this. I'll house this for approximately one quarter to three eighths of an inch. So now when it's pulled together with a come along, it's gonna actually go inside of it and look like it's growing out of the post. Because we're furniture makers, it's what we shoot for. You know, we shoot for making a piece like this look so abstract and at the same time look so very natural almost as if you were creating uh, something that Mother Nature might create to build a tree for. What we would do is we would scribe and house for this queen post. And then we'd come over to this intersection, which I haven't done yet. I haven't housed this yet. All I've done is scribe it. And we'll scribe this. Then we have to disassemble it, which just takes a few moments. Let me show you. Look, it comes, comes right apart. comes right apart for us. So then we'll come to this one, we'll scribe it in, then we'll house this also. Now if you guys are understanding me, which I'm hoping you are, really quick, we'll pre-assemble this with the queen posts wider than they need to be, by approximately an inch and a half. Then we'll scribe in to the queen posts. 
Then we'll mortise that out, house them, we'll reassemble it, and we'll pull it together with a come along. We'll keep pulling it together with a come along until we compress the wood fibers enough. Then we'll take another hook and go measurement. And uh, my experience has brought me to the point where I might have to do that two times. And usually by the second time, we're able to get it when we, we may have to mortise a little more out of each side, maybe a sixteenth, maybe an eighth. And then what we'll do is put the come-alongs back on, we'll draw the come-alongs in until this queen bent is 12 foot at the top and 12 foot at the bottom, and then we're ready, then it's done. Then we have successfully scribed in these 4 by 12 cherry pieces into a queen bed. Um, pretty cool, I'll tell you, our sawhorses are tiger maple and cherry. The floor we're standing on is cherry, and we're talking about a queen bed that's cherry. So anyway, you guys, I hope you'll consider uh, looking at our other videos on YouTube. Uh, it would be our pleasure to have you take 2015 class of the Northford Timber Framers this year. Uh, make a trip up to Maine with us. See the donations that we make. We'll reach out to some people in the community and possibly help a woman with breast cancer or a child with uh, some sort of a medical issue. Possibly help a soldier or a veteran who's returning home. That's what we do with the money that we raise from the projects that we do. And anyway, Merry Christmas to you guys, and uh, please consider taking our North for Timber Frame class. Thank you.